Quiet on the set, please. Roll the sound. Stage light set. On the air. Four, three, two. Ladies and gentlemen, live from Billy Burke Studio in Sierra Madre, California. It's the Billy Burke Variety Show. Hey, let me tell you, you guys look fantastic. Thank you for coming out. It's just amazing. I'm so happy I get to share this with you. Look, I've, I've got some fantastic music tonight, and I can't wait to share it, so I'm not going to rattle on for too long. I want to introduce you to a trio from Louisville, Kentucky, and they're going to blow your mind. I don't think you've ever seen anything like it. Anyhow, please enjoy the fantastic sounds of Billy the Burke and his Bluegrass Boys. <laughs> Great playing. Oh, they think we're awesome. Oh, the mandolin is always so challenging, but finally, oh, they think we're amazing. Oh, I've always wanted to be a great mandolin player. Oh, my gosh, it was just so easy the way it came out from my fi- What? What? Ah, oh, shoot. Well, I've always wanted to be a great mandolin player, but it was just so elusive the whole time. Well, at least I can play the mandolin in my dreams. Ah! I see you are still here. Well, you just watched the most epic intro to a video that I will probably ever make. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm sure you've noticed uh, that I'm not playing a guitar like I usually do. Uh, this is my mandolin, and um, it's one of my favorite instruments ever, and I have been trying to play the thing for over 20 years, and failing for most of it. Um, this video is really directed at guitar players that would like to play the mandolin, maybe went out and got a mandolin, and kind of gave up or never really reached a competency level that was anywhere close to what they have on the guitar. Um, that was certainly my story. Uh, when I got a mandolin in 1997, that was my first one, um, you know, I was a professional guitar player. I've been playing for a long time. And uh, it was not working out for me. I mean, it wasn't that I couldn't play notes on it and play melodies and that kind of thing, but I couldn't unlock um, the feel of the instrument that I loved. I could do sort of guitarish things. I kind of figured out all that basic, you know, upside down guitar type 
type chords, and I could play scales. I understood the guitar fretboard well enough to translate that onto this instrument and the names of the notes and the strings and the intervals and all that kind of thing. Not a problem. But I simply couldn't wrap my mind around how, how to make it work. Um, time went by. I, I did sort of learn that like fiddle tunes were kind of the backbone of the mandolin catalog. And I did learn a lot of fiddle tunes on acoustic guitar, and I could play them. And I tried putting them on here, and I could do it to some degree, but I could never re really turn it into the same kind of improvisational fuel that it was for my guitar playing. Um, and then back in 2019, I decided to get a, another instrument because I was also learning that, that the instrument choice itself really makes a big difference. Um, the, the instrument I had before had a very narrow neck, I had a flat fingerboard and uh, pretty small frets. And that was a, that ultimately was a huge barrier to being able to operate it in my very guitar handy kind of mind. Um, and when I got this instrument and it did open up the possibilities of things I could play uh, pretty dramatically, I started to transcribe a lot of music. Transcribing has been my number one tool for learning, you know, just sit there and figure out how somebody did it. With YouTube, I would watch videos of guys like Sam Bush or Chris Thiele or, um, you know, people like that playing the mandolin and, you know, transcribe their stuff. Um, which reminds me, the, uh, in the link down below in the description, there is a link to the transcription of the piece that I played in the intro. Um, the name of that song is Bluegrass Stomp. It's a Bill Monroe uh, mandolin tune. Very cool. I'll get into describing how to play it here in a minute. Um, but um, mainly, I started looking for music that had some similar, um, like, forceful playing like you would play on a guitar. And um, when I ran across this song, it was really one of the first songs I'm like, you know, this has that deep blue sound that I really like in a lot of bluegrass mandolin playing, but it's not like this, you know, high speed precision F1 supercar type of performance. I mean, these guys who play bluegrass and are really masters of the style are just animals, man. It's, it's unbelievable. One exception to that would be Sam Bush. I mean, he has a lot of speed and precision, but he's not exactly a surgeon, and uh, he has a super powerful playing style. So if you are a guitar player and you're not familiar with Sam Bush, you know, look into that guy. He's certainly got it in spades. Um, this version of uh, Bluegrass Stomp was something I transcribed of Sam Bush playing it on a radio station that I wrote down here. It was KSPN. Um, and I can't remember the name, the exact name of the video, but I will paste the link down in the description there. Um, but it's just Sam Bush playing this song as part of a radio interview. And if you watch it, you'll find that maybe Sam Bush isn't super happy with the way he played, but he still kind of kills it. Um, a lot of cool stuff in there. So what I did is I transcribed Sam Bush's first two verses of this 12 bar blues. So 24 bars of it. And then when I was learning it, it was, you know, pretty detailed and kind of tricky in certain places, and I really wasn't ready for that whole meal. Um, I, I got that main lick and then kind of just felt my way through the other parts of it and the chord changes. Um, and, and that's where the middle two verses came out of it in the previous performance. So verse one, Sam Bush. Verse two and three, Billy Burke. Verse four, Sam Bush. Um, and... You know, I repurposed a lot of his licks. I mean, I, I repurpose everything. I'm just a big, fat music recycler for sure. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get into, like, the gist of how this gets played. So the song is Bluegrass Stomp. There is a transcription link in the description below. Uh, it was originally written by Bill Monroe. And uh, I took some liberties in my arrangement. Uh, in that opening lick um, where it plays... Um, I deliberately play an F natural, even though the, the song is a blues in G. And I made it into a very minor sounding D in that intro part. So that... Mm -hmm. 
this is nice here. Nice blues lick. Um, the transcription is fairly detailed. And I did shoot a version of this video where I went over all four verses and it was super long. And I don't know that anybody's gonna chew their way through that whole thing. So what I wanna talk about is some of the distinctive spots. That was one of them right there, that nice little. Very cool. Um, the second verse, oh, and then the, so that's the turnaround of the first verse. The second verse turnaround is one that I made up that's a little easier and it's just. and I'm just ending on a D chord. So that is just an A blue, major A blues lick. Or, and I'm just starting out with like a little double stop there where I'm on the second fret of the third string and the third fret of the second string. Um, up to the fourth fret. That's the fifth scale degree. The sixth scale degree, very country blues sounding. Up to the root. Something like that, right? And then the... So that's the ending of my second verse. Uh, my The start of the second verse is very similar to Sam Bush's, just easier um, and more repetitive. The third verse, I borrow that part kind of like from the intro of uh, Pride and Joy by Stevie Ray Vaughan, that... Uh, Then just a big major lick. Uh, and that's really similar to the, my turnaround here. Right? So the same lick. And what I'm doing there is I'm starting on the uh, eighth fret of the second string, up to nine, five on the first string, seven on the first string, 10 on the first string, back to seven, on the five on the first string, then not, um, nine on the second string, and then uh, it goes into another lick, which I believe is. So uh, this is for the G chord, and I'm, I'm just like using the same type of thing over and over again. I'm going from the minor third of the G, which is the sixth fret, up to the seventh fret, major third, back to six, down to uh, five, no, two, sorry. Uh, in the fifth fret, but the second scale degree. And then this kind of bluesy lick here. Guitarish, right? Um, so that's six, or seventh fret, sixth scale degree of the G. Um, eighth fret, seventh scale degree. Back to the fifth, back to the seventh fret. Um, sixth fret, fifth fret. I probably shouldn't get into the interval names on there, but this is the kind of stuff you play on the guitar all the time. Sounds pretty good on the mandolin. And then, uh... So that is for the, um, back in the, to the four chord again. And so what I'm doing there is I'm playing the third fret of the third string, fourth fret of the third string, second fret of the second string. Open first, uh, second string. Back to the second fret of the second string. Open first string, second string. Gosh, I hope I make it through it. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, so uh, this is my turn. The turnaround for the third verse is the same as the turnaround for the second verse. But, you know, without that wrong note in it. Uh, Okay, um, now the fourth verse is uh, Sam Bush's verse. I made a tiny uh, tweak to the beginning part, used a similar mojo to my third verse. Maybe my third verse uses a similar vote mojo to Sam Bush's fourth, well, his second verse, but oh gosh, so confusing. Um, anyway, it goes like this. So I'm playing this little uh, D major double stop here. I'm on the fourth fret of the third string and the fifth fret of the second string. And then I do a little inversion here. Okay, this is a, a good shape to know on the mandolin because it's, it's, it's in the guitar. 
Um, so if you're playing in the key of E, like you're playing a blues in the key of E, and you play the, the third fret of the second string and the fourth fret of the third string, that sound right there, you know what I'm talking about, maybe with the open E on top. Classic, you know, textbook intro blues type of lick there. And you can hammer on from the third fret to the fourth fret of the third string and get this kind of sound. Right? So I use that shape here on this part. Um, before there's a stop and then an awesome lick. Okay, so this intro to the fourth verse is. I'm on the third fret of the second string and I'm on the seventh fret of the third string. That's one of those things about the mandolin. These frets are so small that you can make these huge leaps like that from the third fret to the seventh fret, no big deal. Um, then uh, back to that first interval again as a stop and then. Okay, it's an awesome lick. Um, so it's from the third fret of the first string to the fifth fret uh, to the first fret hammering onto the second fret of the first string. So that's all on the first string. And that's three, five, three open on the second string. Sixth fret of the third string, fifth fret of the third string back to the open second. And then this kind of pull off lick. Uh, Pull off to a ham pull off to a slide. So I'm pulling off of the third fret to the second fret of the third string, and then the open uh, third string, and then third fret of the fourth string up to the fourth fret of the fourth string, open third string. So okay, then kind of borrows like from a shuffle blues. Um, and then there's this other awesome lick. So that little rhythm thing is uh, just like a typical Stevie Ray Vaughan shuffle. Okay, so that lick right there, which gave me a lot of trouble in the beginning, uh, is starts on the low uh, G string, and you're on the second fret. You go from the second fret to the fifth, kind of a pentatonic two, five on the fourth string, open D, uh, fifth fret of the fourth string. So after the fifth fret of the third string, hammer from three to four on the third string. Okay, so I went open three, five, and all this is in the tab in the link below of the second string. And that's three, five, one, two on the first string. Uh, it's zero, three, zero on the second string. So that's the um, third fret of the second string onto the fourth fret, then fifth fret of the first string. Okay, does that twice with that, and then tags that A a couple times. So that's the three, four, five, four, three, five on the second string. So we have Yeah, so after the uh, another three five three there, then two three two on the A string. So two three two to open on the A string. Then the fifth fret of the third string, the D string. So that's the fourth fret, a third fret to the fourth fret on the third string. And then third fret of the G string up to the fourth fret, open D. And that's just the second fret of the G string. So you're playing an A and then just kind of playing the low part of a, of a regular open D chord. So that last lick that t turns it around in the fourth verse. I think I just played it right and described it wrong. Uh, anyway, it's all there in the tab. Thank you for watching my video. Uh, I did just top 
a hundred subscribers like at the beginning of June. Uh, that's kind of cool. Um, I don't know how much more mandolin material I might do. I do have quite a few other transcriptions that I've written out, and uh, it was fun to do this. I just don't know that I'm going to go through all that literal song and dance um, that I did in the intro. Okay. Um, I think uh, I think that'll do it. Hopefully I can carve this into something that you will get something out of. All right. Good luck with your mandolin. Thanks for playing music with me today. <laughs>